but a polynomial with real coefficients of degree four, which has as complex roots one plus i and three i. Tool we're gonna to need, complex conjugation. So, we have a complex number, z equal to a plus bi, where a and b are real. It's complex conjugate, it's gonna be given by a minus bi. So all we're doing is taking the imaginary part, the part that has the i, and changing the sign. Now, if z is a real number, meaning it just has an a, okay, just the real part, then its complex conjugate is equal to itself. So z equals z bar. Next, if I have a polynomial with real coefficients, if I have a complex root, say a plus bi, then its complex conjugate is also gonna be a root of the polynomial. So if our root is real, we take its complex conjugate, we do nothing. We just get the same root back. So for real roots, this doesn't really give us any idea of how to get new ones. But if I have a complex root, a plus bi, where b is non-zero, so we have a non-zero imaginary part, then complex conjugation is gonna give us another root of our polynomial. That's what we're gonna need here. Good way to see this, use the quadratic case. So I have ax squared plus bx plus c, I want its roots. So we use the quadratic equation, that gives me x equal to minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This gets interesting when b squared minus 4ac is negative. So in that case, let's call it d. Then the roots will be minus b over 2a plus minus i times square root of the absolute value of d over 2a. Okay, now this is just being proper about things. D is negative. I want to get the minus sign out of there. Square root of minus one is going to be i. That's how we define i. And just note, absolute value of d is just this number without its minus sign. Okay, so think of the concrete example. If I take x squared minus 2x plus 2, what do we have? Your d is going to be minus 4. So we're just going to pull out, okay, that's going to have, I'm going to take the square root. Square root of minus 1 gives me an i. Square root of 4 gives me a 2. Then when I divide by 2a, that's going to be, okay, a is 1 here. Divide by 2 just gives me an i. And then I have plus minus, and then we'll get a 1 for this piece. So that's going to be the roots of this guy. But you'll notice what's coming out is a pair of complex conjugate, complex numbers. Okay, so back to the original problem. I have 1 plus i. 3i as roots, so I have to throw in the complex conjugates if we want to have a real polynomial. So we'll have 1 minus i and minus 3i. So we have four factors coming from them roots. It's just going to be x minus your root. So we'll have x minus 1 plus i, x minus 3i, x minus 1 minus i, then x minus a minus 3i, which is x plus 3i. The easiest way to multiply this out Okay, you can grind it out, but it's better to pair the conjugates together so that way you're going to have differences of two squares. So for instance, if I take x minus 3i, x plus 3i gives me x squared minus 3 squared i squared. Okay, i squared is minus 1, so that becomes x squared plus 9. For the other pair, you can grind that out, or you can notice I can write these as x minus 1 plus minus i. Then your difference of two squares is going to be x minus 1 squared minus i squared. Okay, i squared is minus 1, so this is x minus 1 squared plus 1, or x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 1, x squared minus 2x plus 2. So, if you'll notice, there are no complex numbers at this stage. Okay, everything is real. So, we could do the final step of just expanding this. Okay. At that point, that's just getting you a final answer, so we stop there.